It's that time again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King Slayer Hoops. Today we are going to be covering the pick and roll, one of the most important plays in basketball in NBA 2K20. I'm going to be showing you, first of all, the basic controls of how to run the pick and roll. And then I'm going to go over some advanced tips of different ways that you can utilize it to defeat your opponent. So let's start off with the basic controls. And just a note here, I am playing on PS4, so if you're on Xbox, you can adapt to the controls based on the Xbox controller. Okay, so to start off, to run a basic pick and roll, what you're gonna do is hold L1 to have a teammate come over and set a pick. Now I do want to leave a note here that you can manually select which teammate sets a screen for you by tapping L1 and then the player's icon. So when you have five players on the court, you tap L1, little icons will pop up over everyone's head, and then you're simply gonna tap the icon that you want based on the player that you wanna set the screen for you. Now, you can decide which side you want your man to set a screen for you. You do this by holding L1 and then tapping L3 or the left stick to choose the side. You can choose whether you want your big man to roll or fade for you by holding L1 and then using R1 to scroll between roll and fade. You can also have your man slip a pick and roll by simply tapping L1 after you've already held L1 to call him for a screen. And if you change to a fade here, you can do the same thing. You can tap it again and he'll fade quicker before he actually makes contact with your defender. So those are the basic controls. I'm gonna show you guys some advanced tips in just a second, but before we get into that, I am gonna ask you guys, please like and subscribe if you wanna support this channel. My goal is to support sim gameplay and make everyone a better 2K player. So if that's something that you support, please like and subscribe. Okay, so once you've got those basic controls down, you're gonna see there are a lot of different ways that you can implement the pick and roll, and I'm gonna show you some of those today. So let's start off here. I'm gonna call a pick and roll with Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam. He's gonna set the screen for me. And we have a successful pick and roll right there. Now let's slow that down and see why this one worked. So I call the screen and what I'm gonna do here is try and get as close to my screener as possible. We're almost brushing shoulders here. So we wanna make contact and that forces my defender to bump into him. So he's out of the play at that point. And we have a good angle to make that pass and Pascal Siakam scores off of the pick and roll. So you can see how the passing angle was important there, and I'm gonna demonstrate that again in just a second. So we're gonna pass the ball around here. I'm gonna call a pick and roll with Marcus Saul, and we're gonna score off the pick and roll again. So one more time, we look at the instant replay. You're gonna see Gasol comes over, sets the screen. We try and make contact with him, almost shoulder to shoulder there. And you can see right here, if we slow it down, Marcus Gasol is well behind his defender and has a straight line drive to the basket. So I know that it's safe to make this pass, it's not gonna get picked off. We get it inside and Marcus Gasol scores. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so on this one, Pascal Siakam is gonna slip and I just wanna show you, he's gonna come up and set the screen. And what we're gonna do here is tell him to slip. Again, we do that by tapping L1. And right here is where we're gonna make this pass because the help defender is too far away to be able to pick this pass off and his initial defender is too far behind to be able to pick it off so we time the pass perfectly and it leads to a successful pick and slip so here's something else you can do this time i am going to call a pick and fade with marcus Saul. so he's going to come up and watch what happens here Look at that. So if we look at that on the replay, we call for a pick and fade because Marcus Hall can shoot the three. So we're gonna move to our left, but then we're gonna switch directions and we end up losing both defenders. And that's something that you can do on the pick and fade. It's pretty effective. We're gonna show one more time. We make sure that our defender makes contact. And as soon as he does, we're gonna go the opposite direction. See that? And we end up getting both defenders behind us for the easy score. Okay, what I wanna show you guys in this example is something about spacing. So right here, you can see I have two teammates on the side of the court that I'm on, right, the left side. So when this happens, 
If I try and do a pick and roll towards the baseline side, this defender right here is gonna be able to help very easily. So when I call for a pick and roll with Marcus Gasol, I'm gonna call it away from the baseline. I'll show you right here. I'm gonna make sure it's on the right side so I can get away from that help defender. And we'll slow this down one more time. So again, you can see if I go left, first of all, I'm gonna be forced out of bounds a little bit. And Clay Thompson is gonna be able to very easily help off of that man in the corner. So we don't want to go to the left. So again, Marcus Gasol is gonna come up here. We're gonna call him on the right side to get away from that corner. He's gonna set the screen. And we're gonna find Pascal Siakam in that dunker spot for a nice, easy jump shot. So now to contrast that, let me show you guys something else here. So now I'm on what's called the weak side of the court, meaning there's only one other teammate on my side. So now I'm gonna call the screen on the baseline side. Okay, so we're gonna slow that down one more time. You can see there's nobody in the corner there. So now is when I wanna go left. And this applies if you're on the right side of the court as well. If there's nobody in that right corner and your ball handler's on the right side, you wanna call the screen on that side and attack the baseline. It's really just intuitive if you think about it. If you see a lot of crowding on one side, you don't wanna call for the screen on that side. That's basically it. So now let's show you again. We're gonna call for a screen. Again, we're gonna go baseline here, except I'm gonna do what's called rejecting the screen. We're gonna show that one more time. So I, I call the screen for the baseline side, but then you're gonna see as soon as my defender makes contact with Marcus Gasol, I'm gonna move away from the screen. And what happens in these situations is you get a lot of easy alley-oops because you can see both defenders are trying to go towards the baseline or towards that out of bounds on the left. And I'm gonna throw it up for my big man. He gets a little finesse alley-oop, but if you throw that up to guys like uh, Blake Griffin or Anthony Davis, you'll have a lot of success and a lot of dunks off of that move right there. Right here, what we're gonna do is get the ball to Marcus Gasol who's rolling, but then use him as a passer. And the reason we're doing that, I'll show you guys right here in the replay. He's gonna set the screen, again, baseline side. We get it to Mark, and then as soon as he catches it, we see that Pascal Siakam down there is doing a little baseline cut. Okay, so that defender is in no man's land. We take advantage of that, we get it to Pascal Siakam, little pump fake, and he finishes inside. This is all stuff that you guys are gonna see and it's gonna come naturally to you the more and more you play this game. But on this one, we're gonna see that that screen was ineffective, or at least that's what it looks like at first. Post up and score. The reason that happened is because pick and rolls a lot of times can lead to mismatches. So you see here, Pascal's defender comes over, switches, and now what happens is Pascal is in the post with D'Angelo Russell on him. And that's an obvious mismatch. You have to keep an eye out for that, because when you see that, you're gonna take advantage in the post. Use your size, get inside, and that's an easy two. D'Lo can't do anything about that whatsoever. So yeah, like I said, a lot of these moves will become second nature to you after you've practiced them enough. If you're new to the game, it's gonna take a little while, don't get too frustrated, but you can practice all of this in scrimmage mode. So usually in the game that's under what's called 2KU or 2K University, and then you go to scrimmage mode. Um, I'll let you guys know for sure once the actual game comes out. And if you wanna practice this while the demo's still out, you can go to 2KU mode, and then hit the touchpad on the PS4 and then go to scrimmage, and that's how you do it. So um, just to recap really quick, I've talked about this in the past, but I do have a lot of different tutorials coming up. Um, I do plan on going over a lot of post moves this year because I am creating a post player for uh, Park and for Rec. I'm calling it my Park and Rec series. Get it? Parks and Rec, like the show. Um, I will be going over playbooks. I'll be going over freelances for five on five basketball. So yeah, if you wanna get better at the game, like I said, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back very soon. I can't wait for the game to come out. Be sure to hit the like button if you haven't done so. Comment with any suggestions for future videos. And until next time, 
happy gaming, y'all.